Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a very cool review for you um, from a brand that we haven't technically ever reviewed on the channel. We've actually reviewed um, the, the sister brand to Everest, um, but we haven't ever reviewed any Everest straps. Well, at least none that were branded as Everest straps anyway. Um, because I don't own any Rolex watches. Um, so unfortunately I haven't been able to partake in their outstanding straps, um, but basically they're a brand that was started by Rolex enthusiasts and they offer really beautiful premium rubber strap and leather strap options um, that are just top notch and really they're known throughout the industry as pretty much being the best aftermarket option available for your Rolex watch. Now, what I can uh, speak to is um, this particular accessory, and it's something that is, um, it's their new watch roll, which I think is absolutely outstanding, and it really blew my mind as far as the design goes. And I'm somebody, if you've watched the channel, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I have a lot of watches. Now, a little thing that a lot of people probably don't know about my channel is that all the watches that I've reviewed, I actually pretty much like 95% of them are watches that I personally own. There's a very small percentage of watches that are loaned in uh, that I review and then send back. Um, these are normally watches that I buy. So I have a lot of watches guys uh, and I probably gonna have to start thinning the herd out here pretty soon um, because my just, my desk, my bedroom, uh, my drawers are just overrun with watch boxes, watch cases, watch rolls and because of that, I can honestly say that I can really speak to um, the idea of uh, watch storage and what's good, what's bad, you know, and, and what's ugly. Now, um, this particular role is absolutely fantastic. It, it blew my mind, the, the design, it, it's just uh, the execution, everything across, um, you know, in any measure, this thing is just outstanding and it's, it's, it makes sense, right? Uh, they're a brand that's known to make high quality, high end pieces uh, as far as this, just a strap goes. Um, but this is just a, a high end, you know, another storage option. And I have tons of watches and I need storage for them. I travel, I'm somebody that if I'm gonna go somewhere, I'd like to bring more than one rock, more than one watch. So it's nice to have a, a roll option that can carry a couple with me. Um, so one of the things, it's, it's tough and I know a lot of people might see this and go like, wow, like that's a cool looking thing, but it's so expensive, why, right? And um, so I, it's hard to see the innovation in something like this unless you can kind of compare it to some type of baseline, right? So what I'm gonna do is very quickly before I move into the Everest watch roll, I'm just gonna put that up here and I'm gonna show you guys what pretty much I found to be the best watch roll before I tried the Everest watch roll. Now, this um, piece here, uh, it, it checks a lot of boxes and it, it pretty much, for me, had a killer design compared to everything else that was on the market until I found this piece. Um, but I'm gonna point out some things that it doesn't cover um, that this one does that I think really add a lot of value. So, of course, very simple if you've ever, had this type of watch roll, um, you know, you, you understand this look. Uh, normally there's just the one button snap there. And then it, well, the thing that makes this roll so good is that it actually has these collars on here which separate the watches so they're not gonna bang into each other. Now that is just like, that's what made this one the best. Because you'd be surprised how many, if you've never purchased something like this, they just don't come with anything. So you put your watches on there and it's just like, it's, it's just a melee um, and they're gonna bump into each other, scuff, whatever. There's a risk of that because there's not a divider. Now these dividers um, are one of the things that make this one worth spending a little bit more money for. Uh, it's, it was just that to me, that was like, oh man, that's like the innovative thing. Like what a great idea, this is what I need. Um, and then of course it does offer a little bit of adjustment as well because if you have a you know nice slim watches that fit in there, you can do that, or you can actually uh, have this relief button here. So if you have like a taller chronograph or diver, needs a little bit more space, um, you can have that too. So 
I was like, oh, that's that's a nice little design feature. Um, so, you know, but there's a problem though with that because now it's just not as sealed, you know, it just doesn't offer that same level of protection. And then another thing is it's a roll, right? So it can roll right away. I mean, that can, if you have a, if you have a bunch of heavy mechanical timepieces in here, this thing could roll. Uh, you just have to try to balance it. And these have rolled on me, you know, but I just haven't, I never thought there was a better thing. Um, I didn't think, I thought this had all the bases covered. This is kind of the best that they got. Um, and I was sorely mistaken because the Everest watch roll just pretty much fixes everything wrong with it and, and fixes things I didn't even realize were wrong with, <laughs> wrong with uh, the basic kind of traditional watch roll. So as you can see here, it's, it has a flat bottom, so this isn't going anywhere. So when you're traveling, uh, this isn't just something you can throw in your luggage. This is something you can put on your nightstand. Um, and you don't necessarily just have to be traveling to do it, but I'm just saying that's definitely a nice feature. It's not gonna roll away. Uh, um, and it's, you know, this thing is just, look at the, look at the stitching on this piece. Of course, this is from a brand that predominantly caters to Rolex owners, so it's, going to be a really beautiful fit and finish and as you can see here a unique feature there's a snap up all the way across every spot versus just one central place for the snaps it actually keeps everything nice and in line and then actually as far as flexing and bending everything it, it actually you know prevents premature wear by having them all snapped across the board now as you can see here they're separated, that's nice, right? But what could possibly be so innovative? Look at this. It actually slides out. And it's individually contoured and everything. It has these great brackets, basically, that can slide in and out. And it's basically, you know, three combined uh, versus just one long one that has a couple of dividers on it. Now, I, it's instead of having to worry about, well, if I wanna get to this watch, I need to take this watch off and then take that watch off and put the other one back on, I can just slide it out and I can grab it. And again, this is a, just a better way to display your watches. Um, it's not gonna roll away on you. You can leave it open, close, whatever. I mean, this olive drab color here, really nice. Of course, I was in Marine Corps for like 10 years, so I enjoy a good olive tone. Um, and then the interior, I mean, what a backdrop. Look at how just beautifully done that is. That, um, that nice kind of uh, peanut butter uh, tone there. I mean, it just plays really well off the green. And of course, there are other color options available. Um, and you know, when I had mentioned that we had never really reviewed anything from Everest, of course, we did review um, from their sister brand, which would be Monta. Uh, so I put the Monta Triumph in here, and then of course the Monta Ocean King version two. So this is actually just the prototype. It's not the full production version. I recently did a sneak preview on that. So if you haven't seen that, please make sure to check uh, my channel history. I, I, just this thing is outstanding. And then also what I squeezed in there was my wonderful Brellum Duo Box. So one of the nice things is, as you can see, the Brellum Duo Box is not a small watch by any means. Um, it's it's a big chronograph, you know? It's mechanical, it has these crazy box dome sapphires on it. So yeah, it's not a small watch. Um, it's not a slim watch, you know? It's kind of unfair to put these two Montas in here that are super slim. Um, but I wanted you guys to see that there's plenty of room in there. I mean, how much thicker do you, are you gonna get? This is like a 16 millimeter chronograph as far as the thickness goes. And look, there's still plenty of room. This thing still s seals and there's it's not leaning on anything. It's not touching on anything. It's not brushing anything. Now, in a, in a roll like this, I would have had to have it on this relief the space here just to give it a little space and it actually still would be rubbing and and you know kind of notching out if it was a dive bezel it's going to be notching out that material and wearing it away prematurely here you don't have to worry about that so i mean it's just one of those things it's very simplistic and you kind of look at it and you think like oh well that's that's great and i did want to show you guys kind of a comparable you know and this this thing's a hundred bucks and I thought, hey, that's expensive, but it's worth it because it's better than everything else that's out there. Um, purely based on the design, not even the fit and finish. I mean, the fit and finish is adequate. 
Um, but it's nothing I would say that this is a luxury level of fit and finish. Now, for this, I would say yes. I, I mean, they just went above and beyond. There's, it just, it doesn't have to be this good. <laughs> the design is good, you know, is is great enough to sell this to sell this role. But the execution, I mean, to me, that's when you take it from the standard into the luxury, you know. Uh, so, I mean, this thing's legit. Um, so this the design is just fantastic. As you can see there, you want to take a closer look. Look at all that space. You got a big, you know, chunky dive clasp. Guess what? It doesn't matter. It's going to fit in there perfectly. You got a nice uh, deployment clasp, um, you know, thicker leather, you know, anything chunkier. It's going to fit in there perfectly. This thing is just fantastic. And then it's flat bottom, so you can actually display this out, you know, and it's just nice. This can hit a tabletop. It doesn't have to just be thrown into, you know, your um, your suitcase while you're traveling. This is something that, to me, is dual purpose. This looks gorgeous on a desk as well or on a nightstand. Um, whether it's a nightstand uh, at a hotel or a nightstand in your bedroom, this thing is great. Um, and as somebody who owns a lot of watches, it's just fantastic to have something like this that really has that type of dual purpose. And... Um, you know, it's not the cheapest one uh, out there. It's 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 under four hundred bucks. It's about I think three seventy five, and uh, a lot of you might be like, oh whoa th what what three seventy five for a watch roll? That's insane. It's not one um, because if you think about one, the amount of money that you're putting in the in these rolls, uh, uh, these aren't even. You know, these aren't Rolexes or anything, but each of these watches are over a thousand bucks. So we got, you know, 2300 oh, slightly under 2000 right around 1500 So, I mean, to put them in a nice case, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, of course, I probably wouldn't buy this, you know, to put a bunch of, you know, $200, $300 watches in. You know, it's just a weird thing to buy a case that's that expensive in comparison, right? But honestly, if you're buying watches like this or nicer... Chances are you're spending that type of money on straps. There are $200 leather straps that are out there. And those are premium quality leather straps um, from a premium brand. Here you have premium brand, premium leather, and um, you're getting a lot of it. And you're getting the innovation of design. You're getting also the execution at a luxury level here. I mean, this thing's gorgeous. And then there's three spaces here. Perfect for a three watch collection. You could, you know, have a, you know, your Man on the Moon Speedmaster, your Rolex Submariner, um, and an Aquaterra in there from Omega. And that could be your three watch collection and it would be perfectly fine in here. Um, or, you know, you could have a Breguet. Um, you could, have, there's just so many options, right? There's so many things you could think of in the three watch collection. You do the Holy Trinity in there. Um, so the crazy thing is though, that this is just, I don't know what's, I don't know if there's anything out there that exists that's better than this. Um, if there is, maybe it's just so ridiculously expensive. I've never even thought to look at it cause I just would be flabbergasted by it. But I think this on first look, on first glance, it seems, you know, yeah, that's that's expensive. Wow, for a watch roll. When I looked up uh, the price, I was like, dang. Um, but when I got it in hand, it's it went from dang to wow. Um, this is just uh, this is just an amazing piece. Uh, I don't think they could sell it cheaper. Honestly, the it, it, it would be tough to sell the straps for as expensive as they sell. You know, selling a strap for two hundred bucks. Um, it would probably be a tougher sell if you were going to start selling stuff like this for $200 um, because there's so much engineering, so much material, um, the craftsmanship, the stitching. There's just more work that goes into something like this. So, I mean, to, to a certain extent, it's like, can you even make this cheaper um, without causing yourself problems elsewhere? So, um, you know, with that said, this thing is just gorgeous. And th there are also some... Uh, some other options as far as colors go. Let me, you know, pull up my tablet here and kind of go through uh, some of the options as you can see here. Um, so, you know, there's different colors, color schemes as you can see here's 
the one that I, you know, currently am, am showing you guys. There's also a blue, which I think is gorgeous. Check that out. Man, that's nice and classic. And then, of course, you have that really nice kind of reverse there with the blue interior and uh, that great kind of uh, basketball uh, orange uh, exterior. And then you have this nice, really a great versatile brown there. Um, and then, of course, the interior, instead of it being a little bit too close to being a quote unquote matchy matchy, right? They've, they've done, they've been thoughtful, right? It would have been cheaper if they just had all the same interior color and, you know, you only had to worry about that type of fabric, but they mixed it up, right? They probably originally did some testing. They're like, oh, that doesn't look good. So let's do this. And that contrast just looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, again, beautiful contrast on the interior beautiful contrast bam i mean this thing is just the business i mean that is a really nice okay yeah so 375 um for these and you know it's really just gorgeous leather quality and then just the stitching you know as you can see there the functionality the design it's all there i mean if you have a super high-end collection Oh, cool. Look, there's actually, it looks like an Ocean Rover. I'm um, sorry, Ocean King, the the first one right there, um, which is pretty cool to see there because we have the, uh, the latest release of the Ocean King. So, um, and then here you can see that nice contrast with that more uh, kind of gray tone brown there. I think that's just really nice. And this that worn leather um, looks just like a comfortable uh, old worn in uh, bomber jacket. Just, just super nice. I mean, again, it's it's tough to really talk too much about these because it's not like there's a lot to them. Um, you know, it's not like when you're talking about a watch, you know, movements, pedigree, all that, you know, horological significance. You, you don't necessarily have all that when you're talking about a watch roll. All I can really do is show you um, that, yeah, this thing, it's not just cool in pictures. This is how it looks in life and it functions and it works. I can take this. It's not going to roll over or you know, roll off the edge of the bed and, you know, um, knock my watches around, it's going to be nice and still. And, you know, I have kids, I don't have to worry about them knocking something and it's going to go rolling. Um, it's going to stand tall and it looks great. I'm just super impressed with the build quality, the design. I mean, again, this is something where I thought that I knew what a good watch roll was. I was like, oh man, this, this someone's gonna ask me, hey, I need a watch roll. Um, which one should I get? I thought I figured it out. You know, I thought I've kind of, I bought enough bad ones. I found one that had kind of was the better version of all those. And I was like, cool, that's, that's what there is. That's what's out there. But you know what? there's something that just reinvented the idea and, and uh, Everest brands just did that for me and I'm just blown away. So, um, you know, I'm sorry this wasn't the kind of standard review, but I'm just really impressed by this piece and, um, you know, I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys. If you liked the video, please do hit like and, uh, you know, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content just like this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.